Mexican election is expected to take place this year on July 1st, and instead there will actually be three different coalitions rather than a barrage of political parties this year. Uh, first and foremost, uh, current President Enrique Peña Nieto will not be able to run again because of term limits, so they are currently looking to elect a new candidate to run the country for the next six years. Uh, candidates have been nominated by uh, the parties, and then they've been, they will be elected by coalition delegates. Uh, as of this recording, there should be three different candidates for the different political organizations. So to start with, the ruling Institutional Revolutionary Party is running in coalition with the Ecologist Green Party and the New Alliance Party. Uh, they are running currently under the banner coalition of Everyone for Mexico. Now, before this selection, it was actually going to be called the uh, Citizen Mead, uh, Citizen Miede for Mexico, but this was struck down as unconstitutional by the national electoral groups, uh, basically stating that that would be unconstitutional because it would give him too much of an unfair advantage. So, but that going to say for it, the person that is running for the Everyone for Mexico banner is the uh, Partido Revolucional uh, Institucional candidate. Jose Antonio Miede Curabiena. I think I may have butchered that name, but I believe but he will be running for the uh, Everyone for Mexico party under a populist, still corporatist sort of standard. And it's also very safe to assume that if elected, um, the PRI will completely just disassociate themselves from anybody else and will continue to dominate and influence Mexican politics, as I'm sure they are trying to dominate and coerce influence to secure another six years of corporate and autocratic rule. The second coalition would be the Four Mexico to the Front group. Uh, they will be a coalition of the Conservative National Action Party, which, if you remember, was in power, I believe, from 1999 to about 2000. And um, they are running with the Social Democratic Democratic Revolution Party and the Moderately Progressive Citizens Movement. Uh, now, it's interesting to note this coalition um, because it is two leftist, social li socially liberal, socially democratic parties with that of a conservative party, um, especially when you consider that the person that's running for the for Mexico to the front party is actually Partido Acción Nacional member Ricardo Cortez. Um, he's the one that will be running for that coalition and yet again I would assume that they're probably running on some sort of <clears throat> probably nationalistic but maybe libertarian liberal conservative some sort of moderate, sort of in-between party. <coughs> and the last one would be the Together We Will Make History Coalition. Uh, this one is by far, I would say, the most bizarre alliance with the, what I would call, almost Bolivarian Labor Party, the Social, the Socially Democratic National Conver Convergence, and the fascist social encounter party. Now social encounter is basically known for its very staunch national conservatism, social conservatism, and well outright Christian framework. They are pretty much a very right far right party having made some controversial statements in the past. Um, Despite this, they are running former Democratic Revolution and institution, uh, Institucional Revolucional can, uh, member turned National Convergence leader Andres Manuel López Obrador. 
Uh, critics are comparing this coalition to Venezuela and Chavismo, despite that the fact that the candidate running for this coalition is neither a fascist nor um, nor a chavismist. He's not. He does not identify with Bolivarianism. He's never had any connections with the Labour Party up until this coalition. So it's very interesting to note that they're doing this, but with all that in consideration, you know, these are the three people that will be running. The ruling, um, the ruling PRI has uh, hired supposedly Venezuelan opposition U.S.-backed J.J. Rendon to work on their campaign, expressing interest in trying everything within the legal framework to prevent Obrador from becoming president, basically accusing him of everything from pretty much, you know, authoritarianism to, you know, I don't know, some whatever anti-socialist sort of idea that they have of him. Again, despite the fact he's not socialist. Um, in addition, the PRI candidate, Jose Antonio Miede, has been accused of plagiarism by directly using an ad that has been previously used by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau during his run as leader of the Liberal Party, in which, as we know, Trudeau won. So, there's a lot of controversy, you know, between... A lot of these candidates, there's definitely going to be quite an interesting framework as this goes. I imagine as far as the um, Together We Will Make History group, I imagine they're trying to run as a socially democratic leftist sort of coalition, despite the fact that they do have a fascist party running, which doesn't necessarily make them look good, and how that became a thing, I don't know. But this is what's going on, and ultimately, the, this is, these are the three candidates that are running. So, once again, those candidates running on July 1st will be uh, Jose, um, will be Jose Antonio Miede Quirbena of the Institucional Revolucional, or in this case, the Everyone for Mexico Coalition, uh, Ricardo Cortez of the Political a um, National, yeah, National Action Party, uh, running for the For Mexico to the Front Coalition, and um, and uh, Antonio, was it Antonio? Yeah, or Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador of the National Convergence Party running under the Together We Will Make History Coalition. Those are the groups running for Mexico. All I can say is Mexico vote wisely. There will most likely be, I will just outright say this now, there will most likely be accusations of voter fraud no matter who wins the election because there will be people shouting at each other no matter what. I can totally believe that there will be voter fraud coming from the PRI, because there usually is. No party has stayed in power 70 years without there being some sort of corruption or fraud involved. You know, so there's going to be accusations after this. It's going to be a very tentious election. It's going, especially following the 43 students that were slaughtered by the government a couple of years ago, that's going to play a part in this election. Um, the war, um, the drug war, uh, the continued civil strife that they're still working out with the Zapatistas, and just in general the economy. So there's going to be a lot of, the, and also the uh, relations with the U.S., over the wall issue. There's going to be a lot of these things that are going to play a part in Mexican politics, and it's going to be very interesting to see how this election plays out, the aftermath coming from it within the, the country, and how relations with the U.S. will be going forward. 
So with that, I'm Red Pagan Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Viva la Mexico. Peace.